Hi guys. So yesterday I popped in to tell you about my plan to create a YouTube channel for students where I will present every weekday a STEM challenge that we're going to work through basically the same kind of challenge, but we'll do different parts of it every day. Um, and we're going to start tomorrow, Monday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific. So I'm inviting you as teachers to join me. And I understand, um, I know probably I would want to be like working a day behind it just so I could see what it was all about and maybe make any small tweaks or changes that I wanted to. So feel free to, you know, lag behind by a day. That's fine. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of what to expect in day one. And I welcome and value your feedback so much because I've never tried anything like this. I've never thought of doing STEM challenges as a distance learning activity um, because, you know, usually we're working with students hands on and the facilitation is so important and the collaboration as well. So I think it's going to present some unique challenges for um, me as the facilitator. But I also think we have some opportunities we wouldn't usually have because the kids are going to have more time. So I'm not planning to constrain the time at all. Um, I'm going to share with you right now, actually, I will share with you the YouTube channel where this is going to take place because it's not my usual channel. Um, I have created a new one that's just for students because I didn't want to put this on the Feel Good Teaching YouTube channel because those videos are directed toward teachers or parents or facilitators, whatever type of educator you might be. And it's important that the students don't see examples of the builds because it inhibits their own problem solving and creativity and I don't want to do that. So I want to keep it separate. And that's why I just started this new channel, Simple STEM From Home. And this is where I'm going to be presenting um, all, the, all the videos for the week. I'm going to create a playlist um, where Monday through Friday is just day one through five. And those will be on one playlist. And then the next week I'll start a new playlist and start a new challenge. So my plan right now is I'm going to give it a shot for a week or two and see how it goes. Um, and if it seems to be catching on and people are enjoying it, then I will keep doing it throughout this quarantine period. So I wanted to show you a little um, sneak peek into, um, oh my goodness, sorry, this uh, I just somehow shrunk my little screen down. I don't know how I did that. Okay, so I wanted to give you a little sneak peek into a couple of things. The first part is I wanted to show you the channel itself right now. The only thing that you're gonna see there is my welcome video for kids. But starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, there will be the playlist. The first playlist will be here and the first video will post at 10. And I wanted to give you also a sneak peek so of how this is, what this is gonna look like and what I'm gonna share with kids. Um, and so this is actually day one. We're gonna focus on tower challenges first because I wanted to focus on something that was a classic and that has super simple materials that the kids are likely to have from home. I'm gonna to talk directly to the kids and give them some ideas of what they might use. I'm gonna tell them they have to ask permission from the responsible adult in their home because I don't want them using materials that their parents don't want them to use up, obviously. So they need to get permission. Um, and I'm gonna give them lots of different ideas um, that they can work around this. Um, the terms of use for this, by the way, as a teacher, as a homeschool parent, they can modify and use this as they like with their own children. Um, and as a teacher, you can modify and share this with your own class versus, uh, via Google Drive or a learning management system of some kind. The ways this cannot be used is any this work or any derivational example of this work cannot be used commercially, meaning you can't repurpose this and repackage it and sell it. Um, and you may not post this publicly on a publicly accessible sites. So if it's a, an open website like your school's um, maybe main page or something like that, I don't want this linked there. What you could link though, if you see down here at the bottom, is my YouTube channel. And then they can go there and they can get these links from there. Um, and if you are in doubt at all, just ask me the question, just send me an email, okay? Um, most uses are gonna be fine. I just, I need to keep some kind of control over it, right? I wanna make sure that it doesn't, um, get misused is the main thing. So I'm going to talk through this with the kids tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do like an introduction to the challenge. I'm going to give them some examples for what they can use as materials. I'm going to talk through the criteria and constraints list, like the really basic version of it. And then I'm going to give them some options to make it more challenging because my goal is to make this work for the widest range of ages possible. Um, and so I want, I'm going to have them basically self-select. So 
if this basic is too easy for them, then I'm gonna give them these options to make it harder. I am gonna talk through all of this on the video with them tomorrow. This is an option for making it harder. Um, on the design analysis slides, I'm gonna talk through this with them. And then my plan is hopefully today, um, I'm gonna actually record um, audio where, with me reading these questions out loud to give them an option if they can't read. Um, and I'm gonna tell them, you know, you can either type in your answers or, you know, talk to somebody in your family and tell them your answers or talk to your pet or, you know, journal it or, you know, draw pictures for answers instead because I know I might be working with kids who um, aren't reading and writing yet. Um, and then this is pretty much, um, I'm gonna split it up by days as I mentioned before. So this is all on day one, they're building and they're doing some analysis. Um, I did have also a Google form. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna do this part daily or not, but I like the idea of having sort of a critical thinking question that the kids could submit to me via Google form. And then I could read it, read some of the answers out loud the next day um, on, the, on the next day's video um, on YouTube. So they could kind of maybe feel it was a little bit more interactive. Some of my videos are gonna be pre-recorded and post it at 10 a.m. Sometimes I will go live on the channel. Um, probably for the first week, a lot of it's going to be pre-recorded. Um, we'll see. I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, but I think it's gonna actually be a really fun, it's gonna be a fun trial for sure. Um, and then I just have some more observations and questions for them. And here I'm gonna actually post a little video. I haven't made it yet um, later in the day where I ask the kids to ask for, ask the responsible adult for permission, but I would love to see cop, like something to do with their work. And I give them a few different options to share back with me. They can either share the file up here or they might take a just a photo of their actual designs and have their responsible adult share it with me on Instagram or share it with me on Facebook. Now for you as a teacher, if you're having your kids do this um, and having them share it directly with you, um, one of the things that you can do as a teacher is actually pick this up um, yourself and then share this out because one of the things I'm going to do here, uh, oh, I didn't, I unshared my screen, but one of the slides I am going to embed the YouTube video there so that it gives teachers an option who are doing distance learning to come in and use the pieces of this that work for them, make some small modifications and tweaks that can work for you. And so you might ha be having your kids share their work directly with you and so then i would ask you as the teacher um, to share some of that back with me um, it's going to help me figure out well first of all i just like to see what they build honestly and i like to see how their scientific reasoning is, where it is now and where it might be developing um, and so that will be helpful to me and also any of your feedback that you want to share with me my email is throughout these google slides that i'll be sharing um, and that all posts at 10 a.m tomorrow and at each weekday at 10 a.m. If there's a Google um, slide component, it will post along with the video in the comment section. One of the things I am planning to do, um, you might notice, I wanted to tell you this is sort of by design. I have decided that um, I wanted to have the, you know, the kids when they are sharing out what they're learning about their designs or they're taking a photo or whatever, I suspect that many of them depends on the level of STEM challenges they've done and what their teachers require, but I suspect many of them probably won't um, be terribly good at communicating um, the important details. You know, they might not remember to put measurements in and things like that, or they might not have a ruler or measuring tape. Um, and so I'm gonna let it just go. And then I'm gonna use examples um, to share with kids about trying to figure out what, how do we communicate because people aren't here. What what kind of information do, would we wanna know looking at this other person's design that we haven't met before? And then hopefully building up on that skill because I don't wanna overwhelm anybody at the beginning. I want it to be sort of more organic to figure out, oh, well, this is, this is a great start and then what else would we wanna know? So um, I don't know what to expect at all. This might not work. Um, like I said, I've never tried to do STEM challenges remotely, but I think that it could be really cool, really fun. And I think that because a lot of parents have been expressing online this week that um, they're really feeling overwhelmed trying to do their jobs, working from home and trying to assist their kids and keep their kids entertained. Um, kids can largely work on their, these STEM challenges on their own or with their siblings. And it will take as much time as we let it take 
So I think it's a, it, it could lend itself very well to the situation we find ourselves in. So if you have any comments or any questions, please let me know. Um, and I guess that's it for now. Wish me luck. And um, I will I'll hopefully see you in this endeavor. And remember, please share feedback all the time. If there's like anything you're thinking like, oh, this didn't work really well for my kids at all, share it. If you're thinking, oh, I like this, but it could be better. Or I wish it did. I wish we had this option or I wish we could do that. Let me know as we go through because I'm going to, you know, as I said, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here trying to figure out what works well and what doesn't. So I'm going to need your feedback for that. Okay. Hope you guys are having a great weekend and I will see you soon. Bye for now.